In this video, I'm gonna talk about token authentication from REST APIs with mobile applications. So how do mobile applications authenticate themselves when they're communicating with things like REST APIs on the internet? That's what I'm gonna talk about and uh, kind of outline, and I'm gonna give you examples in this video. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna, if you don't know exactly what authentication is, exactly what it means, kind of, you know, you don't know much. I wanna give you an example of authentication from a mobile application. So if you've watched any of my courses on my website, a lot of you have watched my local database cache with a REST API course. And what this does is it interacts with a REST API on the internet from a website foodtofork.com. And it interacts with it through its, through its REST API. So how does it do that? Well, if you go over to browse from foodtofork.com and you go down to the section that says recipe API, here it gives an outline of how the REST API works on this website. So first of all, it tells you to either sign up or log in. And, um, and you need to do that because you need something called an authentication key to be able to interact with the API. It's also, it's also known as an authentication token. So if you come down through the documentation here, you can see one of the examples says, if you're searching for like a recipe on this website, the first parameter is a key, and this is your authentication key. And in order to get an authentication key, we need to sign up. So let's, uh, let's I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log in. It's free, so you can log in with your email, and I think you can create you know as many as you want. If you want a new API key, you can just literally create a new email and then you get the API key. So there is my API key. I have, uh, it says I have a free plan. I can use 50 requests per day and there's the API key. So now if I want to interact with food to fork, Dot com, I need to copy this API key and I need to use that in the request that I send from the app. But we can test this using Postman. So I'm going to go to, I'll, I'll make a get request. I'll, I'll add an authorization header to this get request. It's going to be token and then I need to add the token. I believe that's the format. I'm going to double, double check here though. So if I go back, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just go to the API again. And let's make a uh, let's make a get request. So let's just uh, let's use this demo request here. Let's go back to Postman. I'm going to paste this in. Uh, my oh, I just need to add the API key up here. So we don't even need an authorization header. So I'm just going to paste in the API key, and this is going to query the foodtofork.com API for any recipes that have chicken breast. So you can see that the query is equal to chicken breast. And if I click send, it gives me a whole bunch of results. So I've built an app that does that exact same thing. So as I mentioned just like a few seconds ago, I have this app and that's what we actually build in this local database cache with a REST API course. So if I was to come up here and I was just to type chicken, which is the same query that we made from Postman, just, oh, it's actually chicken breast. So let's go, uh, Let's go chicken breast. And if I was to click enter, it will execute a query. And these are all the results that Postman just retrieved. It's just displayed in an application. So the, the takeaway here is how, how, um, how the website is authenticating a different technology or a different uh, point of access, which is the mobile application, how it's allowing it to get its data. It's getting it, it's allowing it through this thing called an authentication token. And that's what uh, we are gonna be doing in my REST API course that I'm building. We're gonna be uh, building uh, a website, which you should have already built, and then we're gonna build a REST API for that website. And just to kind of give you a sneak peek at what the end product is gonna look like, here is my open source REST API or website, I guess, openapi.xyz. If you want to know how to use the API, you can just go over to the API section over here. And this will outline how to use my open source REST API that's available to Coding with Mitch members. Um, so I'm building this course, or sorry, I'm building this course right here, building a REST API with the Django REST framework that's currently in progress. That's going to be showing you how to actually build this REST API. And then after that, we're going to build a mobile application that communicates with that REST API through token authentication, which is the same authentication method that I just showed you from foodtofork.com. So hopefully that kind of shed some light on how we're gonna be doing things. Basically the takeaway is you have information on a server, uh, it's ac accessible through a REST API, and we need to access that data or authenticate ourselves so we can access that data using an authentication token.
I guess uh, I could actually show you a demonstration of the API. So I'll show you a demo of how to use this on my website, openapi.xyz. So let's pull up Postman. And the first thing you need to do with this process, which I'm going to be showing you how to do this in the course, is you need to get that authentication token. Because if you look on the website, there's nowhere for you to actually get that token. You can only get that token through the REST API itself. So the first URL is HTTPS openapi.xyz API account slash login. And what you have to do is you go to body. This is a post request. You want to post a registered email. So this is an email that I have registered on the website. You want to enter the password. In this case, my password is one, password1234. And I want to click send and that will spit out a token. And then, so we can do this from the application that we're gonna build. We're gonna build a mobile app, and then from the app, we'll be able to log in, just like you see here, and we'll be able to obtain that token. Once we have that token, we can do anything. We can make any request to the server. So if I go to the home screen, uh, I only have a single blog post right now, but once people start using it uh, from the course, there'll be more blog posts to retrieve. So, uh, you know, say we wanna retrieve this blog post. All we need is the slug and the token. So I'm copying the slug to the blog post. I'm gonna to go to one of these URLs. So it's gonna be https slash slash uh, openapi.xyz slash API blog. And then I wanna paste the slug in here, which I just copied from the website. And um, first I'll try it with no token. So right now there's no token header. It will not allow me. It says authentication cred credentials were not provided. So now let's go over to login. I'm going to copy that token that we just got a few few seconds ago. Go back to our request. I'm going to add an authorization header. Go and then we want to write the value as token and then paste in that token. And if I click send, oh whoops, this is the wrong request. I want to change this to a get request. Click send. It says you must be a member on my website. Uh, I forgot that I added a restriction that if you are not a member, even if you have a token, you won't be able to uh, view this uh, the content on the website to the REST API. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'm going to give this, this user that we just got a token for access to my website and we'll come back and make the request again. All right, so what I've done off camera is I actually logged in with my admin account and I got the token for the admin account and I replaced it as a header. I'm not gonna show you because uh, if I show you that token is actually valid and you could use it. So, uh, so I'm not gonna show it to you, but I have changed it. So let's try and make the request with a valid token now. So there we go. I'm able to see the content on the website through the REST API. So that's kind of the overall process that we're gonna be implementing in the REST API course. I'm gonna, you're gonna be able to register users, authenticate users by grabbing the token, and then you'll be able to you know, look at blog posts, create blog posts, update blog posts, all that stuff on the website from a mobile application using token authentication. And just to kind of reiterate once again, if you wanna know how to build a REST API or interact with a REST API with a database cache, you can check out my local database caching with REST API course. But uh, I'm gonna be doing all that in my upcoming course also. So if you go kind of to the API section on openapi.com, that's gonna be this course right here. So in this, in this course that I'm showing you right now with the REST API, we are gonna be building the actual implementation of the REST API on a server. Then we're gonna build a Android application, a mobile application that interacts with that REST API. So it's gonna interact. If you don't wanna build the REST API, that's fine too. You can just interact with the one that I have here on openapi.com, but uh, it should be a really cool course. It'll show you a lot of you know, really, really powerful skills. Because I know, I know a lot of you right now use Firebase for basically all of your backend needs, which is fine, but it's not, I guess, as ideal because you don't own the data. Like if Firebase decided to shut down tomorrow, you lose everything. It's also really, they don't really have very good search functionality, like SQL databases have superior search functionality or Postgres, you know, whatever you wanna use, they all have superior uh, functionality. So you have a server that you own, you have an API to interact with that server, then you have an app to interact with the REST API and everything you own, right? So there's no there's no um, dependency on like another framework or another platform like Firebase. So again, nothing wrong with Firebase. I don't have anything against Firebase. It's great. I just think that having the control in your hands alone is always the better way to go. So lots of valuable skills coming up. 
definitely if you want to be a freelancer, it's kind of like the whole package, right? Like you could build a server, you could build the REST API, and you could build the app that interacts with the REST API. And then even if you had to hire an iOS developer to build the iOS version, it'll be relatively simple, right? Because he can just copy the Android app and the URL endpoints on your server are already there. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. So anyway, I think I'm going to end this video. I've been talking for a little while. Uh, again, if you want to watch this course, you can go to my website, go to courses, and you'll find the REST API course, or go to openapi.xyz, go to API, and you can click building a REST API, the Django REST framework here, or how to build an actual website with Python, which is the first part. And then the third part will be uh, building the mobile app to interact with it. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.